Okay, there we go. Ready? Wonderful. Well, we're here with John Bacon, New York Times bestselling author. Um, thank you so much for giving us some of your time today. Oh, thank you, Adam. Now, there are a few headlining stories and rivals. The The biggest for me was the one with Bo and Woody. I, I, I'm not from Michigan. I have never, I, you know, I've watched the games, but I've never experienced what it's like. Um, was there a specific story from Rivals that you really fought for because of its importance? Um, what was what was kind of your role in kind of pushing some of the narratives that you guys wanted to push? Well, you're giving me too much credit here. I didn't have the, the place to uh, push for really anything uh, other than I talked on camera for two or three hours. And what I was very gratified about is the stories beneath the surface are the ones that made the cut. Obviously, you got to cover the 69 game, the 1950 uh, snowball, etc. cetera. Um, but what was fun about this was it was an actually an original take uh, on what is, you know, there are lots of documentaries of this. I've written a few books myself about this and I actually learned things I didn't know. So the most gratifying thing for me is to get beneath the surface to talk about the infrastructure of how this rivalry is set up and why it's very likely to endure for a long time, no matter what's happening on the surface. And that was the fun part for me. That's amazing. Uh, speaking of that, kind of the the quote usually is history is written by the victor, in this case, the <laughs> author. Um, but when talking about a true rivalry, there's never a true victor. It, it goes back and forth. Um, as an author, does that make writing about it um, easier or harder, given that like it's always changing? You can never say, well, this is the one who wins. This is the one who loses because it's so they, they talked about how there were just chunks where, you know, Ohio State was winning and then Michigan and then Ohio State and Michigan. Um, as a football fan myself, I know that for fans, it's it's difficult for us to kind of allow for the other team to be successful. Sure. But. I would say it's not easier when it goes back and forth, but it's better. Uh, it makes it more interesting for sure. And Chris Spielman um, had a great comment a few years ago, former linebacker for Ohio State, all pro with the Detroit Lions and now on TV a lot. When Michigan was losing, you know, 10 in a row, he said, Michigan's not upholding their end of the deal. It's not that he wanted Ohio State to lose, but he wants a title. It's got to be Ali Frazier. Uh, it's got to be you know, two heavyweights in their prime, basically, going at it. And that's what you know lacked, of course, the last 10 years. It seemed to be back almost always with Harbaugh. And, of course, Ohio State's not missed a beat. Um, so the games have almost always – he's only won one out of seven, but two or three were highly competitive and uh, top 10 teams and so on this year included, it looks like. So I'd say it's not easier to write about it that way, but it's more fun. Otherwise you lack the dynamic tension to hold your interest. So while you were being, uh, interviewed for this process, you said that it was about two and a half hours that you just sat there and got to talk about it. Um, was there ever a moment that they had to tone you down when it came to just like how energetic you got? Because sports <laughs> can be one of those things that you just keep, you get so excited. Well, I remember this and I remember that. Did they ever have to tone you down? There might've been a couple of times I went too fast based on my enthusiasm of this or that, but, uh, I'm older now, more experienced, so I know how to modulate better than I could 10, 15 years ago. But they did catch me on camera, and I did not. This is not supposed to be part of the final cut, and maybe I'm supposed to object as a journalist because you're not <laughs> supposed to say partisan things. I don't wear Michigan colors, of course, and uh, we we hopefully report fairly with Ohio State. And I got a lot of friends there and a lot of mutual respect, I think. Um, but they did catch me on camera saying, "Trestle that sob." <laughs> <laughs> Because he lost but once or twice, and Urban Meyer never lost. He was 7-0. and uh, So on some level, it's pretty hard to shake the entire thing. In a press box, I'll never cheer, obviously. And Archie Griffin, the star of the Buckeyes, is one of the finest men I've met in any endeavor. Um, and what Dan Deardorff said on camera is exactly right. What separates this from other rivalries, I think, is a maybe a hatred on the surface and your resentment, competitiveness, and so on, but a deep and abiding respect. Um, there's very little trash talk in this game historically. Um, and there won't be the week before the game either. Both teams are pretty disciplined. Um, so that's there. And that's not always there uh, with Auburn, Alabama. I mean, the one guy's, you know, poisoning the trees for crying out loud. That's, I can't call that respect. Um, so you don't see that with this rivalry. That's wonderful. Um, so I'm a Miami Dolphins fan myself. So I hear a whole lot about Michigan because our owner, we've had Chad Henney on our team. We drafted Ted Ginn from Ohio State. Um, so we, we're very familiar Jake with Long, this rivalry. Course. Pardon? Yeah, Jake Long for a while. Exactly. Yep, yep, yep. Loved Jake Long. 
Great guy. Um, but uh, was there any uh, individual player that you wish that they had been able to talk more about that maybe they didn't get to and you, you know, here's a chance for you to tell people, you know, hey, look up this player. He was very influential and we didn't get a chance to talk to him. I actually no, And in part because other documentaries have gotten to you know, a wider scope in some cases, I thought the genius here was focusing on a handful of people to tell a consistent story. It's what Ken Burns did with the Vietnam series, which I think is one of his best, if not his best. Uh, you can't talk to everybody involved in Vietnam. You have to pick about 15 people and here, you know, about the same number, more or less. Um, they got Deardorff, they got Archie Griffin, they got the guys you wanted. I'd rather have Archie Griffin and Dan Deardorff speak five or six times than, you know, 18 faces. Um, so in that sense, I thought it allowed for a deeper dive. And when you see how one person can feel so many different ways about one thing, you know, God, we hate him, but God, we respect him. And, <laughs> uh, you know, and how you look back on it, these guys, all these are all these years later, it hasn't worn off, which I think does not happen in pro sports. So you've been you've been doing this for a little while now. You have plenty of experience with this rivalry specifically. Is there another one that you've seen out there that uh, that you would like for them to do a, a rivals type uh, documentary about? Well, sure. I mean, you can name a lot of them. The Celtics and the Lakers, of course, the uh, Red Sox, Yankees, Auburn, Alabama, Texas, Oklahoma. It is striking how many of these are college football. Of course, Duke UNC has been done. Um, and basketball, naturally. Um, but I think that this one is somewhat unique. Uh, and it, what was fun for me is watching them break it down psychologically and intellectually, academically, uh, exactly what a rivalry really is. And you go, you go oh, yeah, oh, yeah, which, which makes sense how this thing has endured, even when one team is dominant, Michigan in the 90s and uh, Ohio State more or less since then, and now it's back and forth. Uh, it's still there because those infrastructural, if you will, elements never leave. And that's when I gained a greater appreciation for the durability of this relate of this rivalry and how it's never it won't end in my lifetime. I'm pretty sure of that. That's phenomenal. Yeah, I I was talking with uh, the other people we've been able to talk to, and I I mentioned to Peter that uh, they should they should if they were going to do the NFL, they should do a whole conference, and because there's so much back and forth. But you were talking earlier about the trash talk. And that's something that I noticed when they were talking about the the rivalry between Michigan and Ohio State is that while the fan base is my trash talk, and there's always been a lot of respect between coaches, between players, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I grew up as a University of Tennessee fan, and uh, oh, we so have we have plenty of uh, trash talk <laughs> that happens between players when it comes to, especially when Alabama comes to town, Florida Gators come to town. You get two so. or three rivals there, obviously. Gators, yeah. And- um, and uh, I'm blanking up. You just said it. Uh, Alabama. Gators, Alabama, of course, and occasionally Georgia, too, of course. And <sighs> Vanderbilt's for the hell of it, I guess. So. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate you so much for giving us some time. You've had some really amazing answers. Um, so I appreciate you giving us that time today. Very kind, Adam. Thank you very much. A pleasure to be on.